um, and competing and fight all the way to the end of the game, um, which they did, even forcing in the overtime. Um, but, you know, I know I didn't come in with no different mindset than I come in uh, every game. Yeah, a couple of your veteran teammates uh, with Wesley Matthews and Mark, you haven't gotten in since uh, January 28th and have been a little bit. and just wonder what you saw specifically from Wesley tonight and uh, kind of what that says about him and what you've seen him be doing these last couple of games when he's been out of the rotation. Um, honestly, it's, it's a great, uh, you know, credit to both of those guys, man. These are veteran guys who could be on a number amount of teams and, you know, start and uh, play big minutes for. Um, and, you know, they, you know, just take heed to their role and does whatever um, is necessary for the team to win, man. And those are guys that you want on your team. is winning basketball. It's um, winning players, man. Just guys that have been around this league for a while that knows um, how this game goes, how coaching goes. And, you know, every night, different schemes, um, you know, different matchups. Hey, David Betterman, please. Trez, uh, we often loop you and Les and Mark and Dennis together because you all came in at the same time. Did you feel any personal um, connection to what Wes was going through and, and any satisfaction for how he came through it, um, being out of the rotation and then? Having uh, the big game tonight? Um, honestly, no. Um, Wes is a, a veteran guy, man. He's been on the numerous amount of teams. He's been in this league for a, a long amount of time, man. And uh, he knows how this game goes. He doesn't, um, you know, it's not like we're, we're talking about a second year or first year guy, man. We're talking about a guy who's been around this league and, you know, knows that, you know, different coaching strategies, different coaching uh, matchups, different coaching lineups, man. That, you know, some nights you might play, some, some nights you might, you know, and it, it goes to, Better than guys as well, man. So, like, it's nothing that Wes had to learn. Um, it's something that he already knows. And like I said, it's something that, you know, he, he teaches younger guys like uh, THT uh, when he, you know, is getting down on himself or uh, even like me or AC, you know, guys who are real high competitive and just want to hold ourselves to a high caliber, man. Wes does a great job on uh, coaching us on the sideline when we're uh, maybe too hard on ourselves sometimes. So, like I said, it's a veteran guy who's been around this game for a long time. Hey, Trez, um, this team is 25 games into the season. Uh, for the guys that were on this team last year, obviously, short off season, long season, and stuff like that. Um, the playoffs and where you guys want to go is a long ways away. What, what, what can you do, you think, to, to kind of help this team sort of fight through the grind of this year, especially in empty stadiums and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know how to, you know, do anything different than I'm already doing, man. Uh, we take it one game at a time, and, you know, like you just said, we're not looking ahead to, you know, game 75 or, or how many other games we got this season, man. We're looking at it. It was one game at a time, and, you know, we came in here with a game plan on what we wanted to take uh, OKC out of the night. We did that. Um, you know, unfortunately, it went to overtime, but we continued to keep playing, and we came out with a big win. And it's the same thing we're going to come back to do on Wednesday and then uh, the game after that. But like I said, it's one game at a time. Hey, Trez, I was just wondering, you know, how much more of a grind has this season felt like just because of everything that's in place and everything you guys are dealing with, you know, obviously no fans. Has it, has it been kind of harder to maybe find, find momentum at, at, as a collective unit? Um, I don't think it has, um, really, man, because at the end of the day, man, um, you know, we're still doing our job, man. We still are, you know, blessed to be able to play this game and call it our job and go out here every night, lace our shoes up here. Um, each and every night and, and get to call it work, man. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's it's not the, you know, what we're accustomed to as in playing in full arenas and having, you know, fans in there supporting us. But at the same time, man, we create our own energy. Um, we're, we're our own biggest uh, supporters and cheerleaders as far as um, players and coaches go. And, you know, we're all fighting for one goal. At the end of the day, man, it's still about getting to that end goal. Um, and I think that's what everybody has in the mindset. And, you know, we don't really, you know, pay that the the scene in your mind um you know when we have fans sometimes we enjoy um we go out there and play the same way um you know play with the passion and the love that we have for the game but it's the same way if we're in the empty arena okay we'll take a, a few more here um Kari jones please hey what's going on sir uh you had mentioned uh Tank a little bit you know he, he's uh there's a lot of reports out right now that you know a lot of people are uh, interested in him, you know, just from his, his future. Uh, how does a guy like that, you know, a young player, you know, continue to stay focused? You know, you guys are on the same 
Uh, nah, but I got my own things. I got to worry about my own lifestyle, man. Uh, this is a young kid who um, I don't think he's really too much worrying about that right now. He's just looking to get better and just looking to go out and uh, just play the game the right way. Um, like I mentioned, we got a great agency with Clutch, and you know we leave those things to them. Um, but we we can't worry about what's not in our control. And you know everything that you just mentioned right there is not in Taylor's control. Only thing Taylor can control is going out here, um, playing the right way. Um, executing our game, playing offense and defense, and you know, playing, playing for the team uh, to win the game. Um, as far as like his individual status and goals, I don't think it's something that he worries about. Um, he's a young player, and he's just looking to continue to keep getting better. Okay, we'll take Claudio Gestro, please. Tristan, thank you so much. We're scrappy. Uh, uh, what was the key to breaking through their defense in the fourth quarter? Um. Well, it's just uh, just keep attacking. Honestly, um, you know we knew they uh, was a scrappy team. and was gonna play to the end of the game, and you know they did that and ended up forcing it into overtime. Um, but you know I think uh, we gotta coming back to play them again on Wednesday. We definitely have to limit them to extra chance shots. I think if we limit them to one shot, then we can get out and run and actually execute our um, flow and our fast paced offense uh, that we want to be known for. Um, I think just tonight there was. You know, really scrappy. They continue to play, uh, you know, for a full, a full game, and then you know, five minutes after that, um, and I think uh, you know, it just showed that they really wanted it. So, um, I think we definitely got to limit them to one shot. Um, we can't give up, you know, second, third, fourth chance shots um, because, as you can see, uh, you know, it builds up a guy's confidence, and then you know, all sorts of players just start making shots. 